Hi guys, welcome to another beer review and uh, today we've got a collaboration between Mikola San Diego and Tuul and this is the Super Glug. I think that's how that's pronounced with the line through the zero. Zero, the O. Um, yeah, England is not my favourite subject, obviously. Uh, but yeah, so this is an ale brewed with grape must, cherry and spices. Clocking in at 11% ABV. So not too sure exactly what ale it is. Um, whether it's a sort of spice ale or if it's a brown ale. or I didn't look it up. I should have done. Um, but going in somewhat blind. Um, first of all, not the biggest fan of beers that have um, like grape must in there. Um, I don't... See, that's why I don't like stuff like beers brewed with champagne yeast or anything like that, or stuff like Brut IPAs, because I'm not a big fan of beers that get too dry on the back end, do you know what I mean? But obviously that's just a personal thing, so I'm not going to hold it against either brewery. But uh, I do have uh, quite a problem, and um, one that I hope you will take seriously and uh, join me in a moment of... Um, in fact, let's just get to it before I uh, well up. I don't know whether to use the Mikla Beer Club glass or the Too Old glass. Um, as if that makes any difference to the beer, let's be honest. Um, yeah, I'm going to use the Too Old glass because I've not used it for quite a while. And I, I like it's just such a satis it's got satisfying girth to it. But uh, yeah, so two of my favourite breweries. Uh, Mikola San Diego is probably my favourite of the uh, Mikola family, I suppose you'd say. I had some absolutely mind-bending beers from those guys. <coughs> and uh, Tool, I'm a massive fan of the experimental nature of the brewery, as well as Mikola. Um, and yeah, I got this in January 2019's Beer Club box. So referral link is down below if you want to get yourself uh, a nice little discount on your own subscription box. Uh, highly recommended, um, especially if, like me, when I first started subscribing, my experience with Mikola was quite limited, and uh, now it seems that pretty much every other beer review that gets uploaded is either a Mikola beer or a beer that came from the uh, Mikola Beer Club box. Um, but I'm not in their pocket yet, so uh, if anybody from a uh, Frank, maybe Mickle, anyone from uh, the marketing side, hit a brother up um, so I can share your beer with uh, 10 viewers per video. Anyway, joking aside, let's get this beer opened and see what we get. Was initially going to save this for um, the Brum Piss Up that's happening, or probably happened by now. Uh, videos should hopefully be uploaded on the Manchester Piss Up channel that we started. In fact, I'm going to make a cheesy trailer to prepare people for the madness that is uh, that lost weekend in Birmingham, which is coming up. Uh, just happens to be the same week as my birthday, so uh, a little bit of a birthday gift, meeting up with uh, some of my genuine brothers. Um, Craig from Camp Beer Reviews, Rob from Hop Scene, Harry from Blue Nose Beer Reviews, Dean from Dean's Beer Reviews, uh, Jake for the first time, uh, Jake O'Beer and Stu from Real, Ginger Real Ale Trail. I'm really looking forward to it. And um, yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna take this because beers like this, which by the way, very generous uh, can fill that. I was gonna take it to the bottle share because I don't really like to drink these sorts of beers and to have the whole can to myself. But I thought, do you know what? No, just drink it. Get yourself used to these sorts of beers so you can give you know, good opinions on them. And that's it. That's the thing when you're doing stuff like this is, you know, let's say I'm not the biggest fan of Hefeweizens, but I'll still try as many as I can. You know, I'm not a big fan of Saison's. I'll still try as many as I can uh, just so I can hopefully decipher what's a good example of the style and what's a bad example of the style. And sometimes you end up finding yourself becoming really quite a big fan of them. Uh, Porters were a, a beer for me that... I never used. To, I used to enjoy them. I enjoy beer in general. Um, but you know, I drink them and I'd think mm, it just lacks the body of a stout. It needs a little bit more. So I'd rather go for a slightly higher ABV stout. I mean, stouts around five percent don't really do much for me because I find the body to be thin. But is it going to stop me from trying them? No. Do you know what I mean? It's it's amazing how your palate can change 
beers you drank ages ago that you absolutely adored can taste so much different a few years down the line and thousands of beers down the line. Uh, plus the beer belly does appreciate your service. But anyway, so I thought let's just get open because I'm going to be uh, doing a little bit of a beer shop anyway to take some beers down. And I believe, if I remember correctly, this was brewed for the Christmas period. So it's a bit festive -y. and uh, interesting colour so far. No real head generating at all. That's really interesting. This would have been a great beer to do a blind beer review on. But yeah, it's sort of like a ruby red look to it. It's got that like cranberry juice, a filtered cranberry juice look to it. Head dissipated ridiculously quick, uh, but then again, it is, it is an 11% uh, ABV ale. Mm -hmm. But yeah, really interested to uh, see what this style is. So we'll give it a little bit of a swirl. Shouldn't have filled it up so much when I'm giving it a sniff. That's what she said. Hmm. That's very berry-like. Loads of hedgerow, hedgerow fruit carrots coming through, like steeped fruits, you know, plums, raisin figs, loads of berry character. Not really getting that sort of grape-like character coming through. Cherries, you're definitely getting the cherries in there. In terms of spice, it's got maybe a little bit of cardamom in there almost has a slight star anise aroma as well a little bit of a like a sort of oh, there's a I've got it on the tip of my tongue and I can visualise it in front of me but I can't name the spice and it's a spice that I use quite a lot it's got a little bit of like a granulated ginger aroma to it that's what I was thinking of yeah, it smells very intriguing, but it's not really telling me what style of beer this is on the nose. Let's see what it tastes like. Cheers. You're definitely getting those spices in there. It's almost got like a botanic flavour to it, like sort of the botanics you get in like a a spiced rum or maybe sort of like a spiced gin as well it's got a relatively light body but it's got this sort of like slickness to it and it coats your lips and your palate no harshness from that 11% ABV at all grape must See, I'm not too sure what, like, difference would be between grape must and, like, adding a Riesling juice or, like, a champagne yeast to a beer. So, you know, that's why beers like this I want to drink more of so I can educate myself about it. So this is it's probably going to be a terrible review. Um, it's going to be purely based on how enjoyable it is, which technically should be the way you review beers, I suppose, um, without getting too bogged down of, well, the style is supposed to taste like this can get a little bit tedious when you're looking at beers like that. Who am I, a fucking Cicerone? No, I'm not. I'm just a person who likes to enjoy beer. And I've got to say, this is going down really well. Yeah, it's got a real sense of smoothness to it. That grape must is added maybe a little bit of dryness there. In fact, I've been drinking a little bit more port recently. I'm getting some berry-like flavours that I get in port in this. Obviously, it's not as sweet, but I'd say it's a, a bit more robust. It's a very complex beer. There's a lot going on in it, but it doesn't get like confused or it's not a mess. It's not a jumble. Ever just it just seems to sort of flow beautifully. In terms of spices, I'm maybe getting a little bit of ginger in there. It's tickling the tongue. Cherries are adding a lovely little bit of tartness to it and a little bit of sweetness. I'm thinking this is quite a Belgian-inspired ale. It reminds me of a 
dark, strong Belgian ale almost. But not as... Um, it doesn't have that lingering aftertaste that I don't like with a lot of Belgian style ales. Yeah, this is absolutely throwing me. If I was to have drank this blind, I would be in a friggin' mess right now. It is so festive. If this wasn't released for Christmas, then it should be. It's like a very like festive liqueur almost. Like you could you know, you could stew your Christmas pudding in this, just keep dousing it in it. Do you know what I mean? It's got that sort of like fortified wine element, but then it's got some like botanical spirit like elements. It's really nice. It's a beautiful surprise. Um, is it something that I could drink a lot of? Well, no, it's 11% ABV. Uh, I get a fucking hangover off drinking like a four pack of Bud, Bud Light, do you know what I mean? Um, I could drink a lot, but it sure doesn't take much for me to feel awful the next day. So yeah, you could just tell that this, after a while, would just demolish you completely. Um, I've got my, a day off tomorrow, but I've got a do stuff which is never good so i don't think i'm drinking much more after this but um yeah this would be beautiful with a nice slow cooked beef like cut of beef that's like being cooked in like a port almost it, it's so reminiscent of those sorts of flavors these dark strong berry like fruits of the forest elements and this is one of those great examples of i mean obviously now craft beers a bit more uh, a lot more people are conscientious of craft beer and uh, different brewing techniques and different styles but this is it's got a real air of sophistication about it do you know what i mean it's not just oh it's good it's not don't take that out of context and make a gif out of it that wouldn't be nice it's just Mikola San Diego. I've had so many different styles of beer by them, and pretty much 99% of them have just been tasty beverages. Um, why am I just... I've just completely gone off what I was originally saying. Um, yeah, this is... It, it, it's got that sort of, like, maturity about it. Do you know what I mean? don't know why I said it like that, but oh well. And this is one of those beers where if, you know, you've got friends and family... Who like, oh, talking about, oh, it's only beer, oh, what's different to beer? This is a great example of, look what flavours you can get. Look at those little intricacies and complexities you can find. And uh, yeah, you know, if you could buy 750ml bottles of this, this would be a perfect beer to share. And it would have been a great beer to take to a bottle share. Almost has like a slight old ale vibe about it, like a British old ale. Even... Even, I'm thinking about it now, an English strong ale that's just imperialised. Even little hints of like a doppelbock in there. Those sorts of dark, chewy flavours. Yeah, that, that's a real surprise. Um, and I've been sitting on it for a little bit. Not literally, or else it would have exploded everywhere. But um, yeah, I think it has potentially mellowed down nicely. And this is a beer that you could actually... Just age for about half a year to a year, maybe even longer, and give it a try. But yeah, fantastic stuff. Um, in terms of a rating, uh, I'm going to give that one an 8 out of 10. Um, I don't think it would be fair to give it any more because I don't really know what style of beer this is supposed to be. Or whether it's just a general ale like some breweries like to make and they've just been a bit experimental. But it is experimental, but it's palatable as well which is very important with beers like this. And uh, yeah, you've got two heavyweights in the craft beer scene coming together and making an absolutely wonderful product. I could see this sort of beer being like a 10 out of 10 for some people. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, so Super Glug from Mikla San Diego and Tuol. Uh, if you've tried it, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Of course, the untapped links and all that sort of stuff will be down below, so it'll tell you what style of beer it is. Uh, check out Mikola San Diego, check out Too Old, check out the relevant playlists, check out my Mikola playlist as well, because I've had some wonderful beers. <coughs> Referral link is down below. If any of my friends spelled beer tubes and reviewed it, I'll put their links down below as well. And uh, I'm about to die because this part of the video is always boring, and I don't know why people wait till the end just for me to just go on and on about 
links that are clearly visible in the description box. So uh, anyway, I need to do some cooking. This is a perfect beer to cook food with and also a perfect beer to drink whilst you're cooking. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and uh, yeah, see you guys later.